Hey there, and welcome to a project video where you'll build a full stack MERN application, our memories project. In previous videos, you'll learn how to set up a full stack MERN project from scratch, as well as learn how to add authentication using email and Google. Today, you're going to add some new essential features. Some of the new features are pagination, allowing you to only fetch a certain number of memories at a time. The second new feature is the ability to search for memories by tags or titles. So if I go in here and enter Europe and click search, we can only see the memories that have the Europe tag in them. Then we can also try with something like the to see which memories have the the in the title. And as you can see, we have four. So that right there was a fully functioning search connected to the database and then serving the resources back to the front end. The next, let's call it a feature, is a complete redesign. If you followed the first three parts of this series, you know that we had that bluish background, only four posts visible at a time, but now this is a whole different story. We added a logo, we made the background look a bit nicer, and this is following all the best material design guidelines. And finally, and most importantly, we're going to add client-side routing a memory details page. You can click on a memory and get more information about that specific memory. As you can see, we even have the recommended memory section. So let's go ahead and check out a few places. We have the Colosseum in Rome. We also have the Prague castle. But you get the point. These don't have to be memories or places. You have a fully functioning CRUD MERN application and you can turn this into any topic or any theme that you'd like. You have a fully working social media application that you can make completely your own. If you haven't watched the first three parts, they're going to be linked in the description. Make sure to watch them first and then come back. This video is special because it can also be watched as a standalone video that teaches you client-side routing and pagination. However, I'd still strongly encourage you to watch the first three parts because then you'll have a much stronger understanding of the project we're building. As I mentioned before, I initially planned on putting this as a paid course, but I later decided to release it completely free for you guys here on YouTube. So to support this video, leave a like, comment and subscribe. It shouldn't take more than a few seconds. I really appreciate it. On another note, some of you in the comments requested me to add some extra features to this application, things like comments or even a live chat feature. If you'd like me to create a fifth part of this series where I add one of the features you requested, make sure to like, comment, and turn on the bell notifications. If this video reaches five to 10,000 likes, we're recording part five. With that said, let's do a short demo and jump straight into the project. I'm currently logged out, and as you can see, I can view the posts, but I cannot like or create new posts. To do that, I need to sign in or create my account. So let's go ahead and click sign in. And then you'll be greeted with the sign in form. In here, we can create a real account in the database, sign in with that same account, or use Google to sign in automatically. I've signed in with my personal account and as you can see, now we can like other people's posts and we can create a post of our own. The memory creation process is incredibly simple. You just enter a title, message, some tags and an image, and it's going to be created right away. If one of the posts right here was created by you, then on the bottom right corner of that card, you would have a delete memory button. For now, let's check some more features. I'm gonna open a memory details page and then the cool feature right there is that you get all of the similar posts you might like. And currently we can see that this is a China and Asia post, but if we go back and search for a place in Europe, something like Dubrovnik in Croatia, as you can see, the recommended posts are all going to be from Europe. That's a really cool feature that we're going to implement today. One more important thing to mention is that this application is fully mobile responsive. And when I say fully, I really mean it. As you can see, our navigation bar, all of our options, everything is in one column, so it's easy to read on mobile devices. 
as well as all of our cards are nicely stacked in one column. If we go ahead and click on one, you can see that that details page is also going to look extremely clean on mobile devices. So without any further ado, grab a cup of coffee and let's start adding some new features. To be sure we're on the same page when starting the project, you can click the GitHub link Project Mern Memories down in the description and that's gonna lead you to this page. While you're here, make sure to start the project if you'd like. And if you wanna start with this part, we're gonna go to the branch part three. Why part three, you might ask if we're doing the part four? Well, part four contains the finished code for the video you're about to watch. So if you have some mistakes in the code, if something doesn't work, then you can download the part four. But for now, you wanna start with the finished part three, and then we're going to implement all of the part four features together in this video. So go to part three, and then you can simply download the code. In this case, I'm gonna simply download it as a zip folder. Once the project is downloaded, you can drag and drop it to your desktop, and then in there, we can simply extract it. Once you've extracted the project, you can simply drag and drop it into your code editor of choice. In this case, we'll be using Visual Studio Code. Once you're there, we can make this a bit bigger and make the text a lot bigger so that all of you can see, and you should see the client and the server directory. Then you can go to view and then terminal, and we can split that terminal into two parts. We're going to clear both sides, the left one is going to be for our client side, meaning React. So you can CD into client, and then there you can run npm install. The second one is going to be for our backend or our server, so you can CD into server, and then there run npm install. Server side is done, the client side is going to take a bit more time. And finally, when both of these are installed, you can simply run npm start in both the client and the server to properly start our full stack application. If you've done everything correctly up to this point, you should see my demo posts. These are some of the most visited places on earth. But of course you can connect your own database. Let me give you a quick refresher on how you can do that. You need to create your own database at MongoDB Atlas. Then you'll be able to connect it by clicking connect and connect your application. In here, you can see a string that you have to connect. Keep in mind, in here you need to enter the password and right here, the name of your database. So let's copy that. Before we go to our code, I also wanna show you that you can change your password right in here, database access, edit, and then edit password. Once you know your password, you can go to server, index.js, scroll down. Right here, you can see the connection URL feel free to delete my URL and simply paste yours right in here. Great. With that said, we are up and running with the old version of our memories project. You can see that we have this playful bluish background. We have no pagination, which means that you always have to search and query hundreds of posts to display them. That's why pagination is one of the best things that we are going to do. We also have no search. So if I go to the top, you can see we cannot search for posts. We cannot click on a post even to see what it is about. So this video is definitely going to be good. Let's start creating the code. To prepare ourselves for all the dependencies that we're going to need, we can open up our terminal, press control C to stop it from running. And then right in here, we can install some of the dependencies we're gonna use in this video. We can say npm or yarn install and then we can say add material dash UI forward slash lab. We're going to use this for pagination and some other things. And finally, we're going to install material dash UI dash chip dash input. That is going to be our input for our tags. And that's it. You can press enter. And once that installs, you can bring this application back to running by pressing npm start. And with that, we can close our terminal and start creating the front end. A smart place to start would be to create the pagination component. So we can go to client, we can go to the source and components, and then right inside of here, we're going to create a new file called pagination.jsx. 
inside of here, we're gonna import React from React as we always do. We are also going to import some of the components from Material UI Lab. We can say import, and that's going to be pagination as well as the pagination item. And this is not being imported from Material UI Core because these are still experimental features. So we're importing them from the Material UI Lab library. Of course, we're going to have some styles. So you can say import styles from dot slash styles. And of course, you could have done this in a folder, but in this case, I'm just going to do them right in here. And that's going to be styles.js. The styles for the pagination component are going to be incredibly simple. We can say import make styles from at material UI forward slash core forward slash styles. This is how we usually do styles in material UI. Finally, you can say export default, make styles, and then in there we call that as a function and provided a callback function that instantly returns an object like this. It is a bit of a weird syntax, but we have to do what we have to do. Inside of there, we'll have only one class called UL, and then it's going to have the property of justify content is equal to space round. Great, that's going to be it for the styles. Now we can go back to the pagination component and continue working on the JSX. Our pagination is going to be a React component called paginate. And it's going to be, of course, a functional component. Inside of there, we're going to use our classes by saying const classes is equal to use styles. And then we call that as a function. And at the top, this should have been use styles and not styles. Great. So now we have the classes. Now, what are we going to return? Well, the return is going to be the pagination component that we are importing right at the top. That pagination is going to be a self-closing tag, but it's going to have a few props. The first prop is going to be classes and classes is equal to object. And then inside of there, UL is equal to classes.ul. Moving further, we're going to have a count. This is the number of pages. In this case, we can make count equal to five. This is just a static amount, but we'll have to dynamically fetch the number of pages depending on the number of posts we currently have. Then we have to have the current page. In this case, let's only say something like one. Of course, this is later on going to be dynamic as well. Then we're going to have a variant, which is going to be simply a string of outlined. We're also going to have a color, which is going to be equal to primary. And we're going to have a render item property, which is going to be a dynamic block of code with a callback function inside of there. Our callback function is going to take an item as a prop and we're going to instantly return something. So we're not going to use curly braces. We're going to use immediately simple parentheses. The thing we're going to return is going to be a pagination item, which is yet again, a self-closing tag. Inside of there, we're first going to spread the item. So we want to pass all of the data from the item right inside of the pagination item. Then we're going to say that this pagination item is going to be a special link component that we're importing from React Router DOM. So we can say import link from React Router DOM. Great, we're gonna use this for routing. And then finally, we have to say where is this pointing to? So we can say two, and that two is going to be equal to a dynamic string, of course, and then inside of there, we can say something like forward slash posts and then question mark page is equal to and then a dynamic page, which is in this case going to be one. But later on, we're going to have a real dynamic link. Now, if we save that, of course, we have to do export default paginate. And with that said, our currently static pagination component is now done. So we can import it somewhere and start using it we're going to import it inside of our home component. Inside of there, we're going to import pagination from dot dot slash pagination. In this case, we don't have to do pagination forward slash pagination because it's not in a special folder. Great, now that we have it, let's see where we can actually call it. I'm going to scroll a bit down and then in here, just below our form, we wanna call our pagination, but we're gonna call it inside of a paper component. 
that paper is going to be coming from Material UI. So just at the top, we can import that paper. Paper is just a white div. That paper is going to have a class name that is going to be equal to classes.pagination. It's also going to have the elevation equal to six, which is going to give it a nice shadow. Finally, inside of there, we can call our pagination component. Of course, it is a self-closing tag. As you can see, currently we don't have classes in there, so I'm gonna delete that, and we're gonna do that later because we have to do a refactor of the entire home component. Now, if I save this and go back, as you can see, just below this form, doesn't look that pretty, but we have our pagination component with five pages, as we specified. Currently, if we click that, nothing is gonna happen because we are navigating to forward slash posts, question mark page is equal to one. But our current client side navigation doesn't know what that is because all the posts are simply on localhost 3000. So we have to make our client side navigation and React Router work with the current new pagination system. First of all, we're going to import one more thing here from React Router DOM, and that is going to be a redirect component. Then we can start working on the JSX. I'm going to change this from LG large to XL, which is extra large, because we want to fit more posts on the screen. Then we have our navbar, and then we have our switch. So first of all, we're going to have a path, just slash, which usually renders first on the page, we don't want to render a home component there. What we want to do is call a callback function, which is simply going to call the redirect component. And that redirect is going to redirect us to, and that's going to be forward slash posts. So we only want to see posts if we are on this specific path, and we're going to be immediately redirected if we do this. Of course, we have to keep in mind that if we want to show something on this specific route, we also need to create it. So just below the current route, I'm gonna create a one more self-closing tag. This one is going to have the path of forward slash posts. It's also going to have the exact parameter and it's going to render the component called home. Before we were rendering the home component on the just slash path. We can now copy and paste this home route just below because we also want to render the home component if we are on the forward slash posts forward slash search. This is going to be rendered when we are searching for something and then in here we'll be able to provide some more parameters like search query and so on. But for now it's important for us to have this right here. Then below that we're going to have one more route. That route is also a self-closing component that has the path which is equal to forward slash posts and then finally forward slash colon ID. This is going to be the post details path. And this colon ID means that this ID is going to be dynamic. Finally, we're going to render a component called post details. Of course, we haven't yet created or imported post details component. So let's do that right now. Inside of our components, I'll create a new folder called post details. Inside of there, we can create a new file called post details.jsx. And inside of there, we can create a new React component. We can use the RAFCE. This is the extension for ES7 React Redux snippets. So I'm going to use that, which is simply going to generate a React component for us. But of course, you can write this by hand if you want to. For now, in there, we can simply put a console log that's going to say something like post details. And we can also just render a string of post details in the JSX, just so we can see if our component is showing up. Now let's go back to the app. And then in here, let's import that post details component by saying import post details from post details. I just want to point your attention to this nice tool I've recently started using, which is called tab nine. You can see it's using AI to autofill code. And it immediately knew that I wanted to autofill this exact thing, which is kind of crazy if you think about it. But with that said, we are now creating and importing post details. And we're pointing to it when somebody goes to posts and then a specific ID. Let's see how that looks in action. If we try to remove the forward slash posts and just check the localhost 3000 and click enter, 
that's going to point us straight back to forward slash posts exactly how we want it. Then we also added the forward slash search. That works, we are right there. And then we also added a specific post page, post details, and in there you have to enter some ID. Right now it doesn't matter which ID we enter, so let's try with one, two, three. And as you can see, if I zoom it in, we have our post details right in here. Finally, we have our forward slash auth page, which is going to be our sign in form. If you open that up, an alert is going to pop up. And the reason why is because we haven't connected a real Google sign in. To see how you can set up full Google authentication, make sure to watch the third part of the series because there I teach you how to do exactly that. For now, to get rid of that alert, we're going to go back to our auth, which is in components and then auth right there. We're going to scroll down a bit and where you can see this alert, we're simply going to swap that into a console.log for now. That way the alert is not going to pop up if you don't have the valid Google console connected. But then again, if you want to connect it, you just have to watch the third part of the video and you're gonna have a valid ID to connect it with. With that said, this is our auth route. If I enter my email and sign in, you can see that everything works right. But somebody can still go to forward slash auth and see this page. That shouldn't be the case if we're currently logged in. We should only be able to see this if we're logged out. So let's fix that. We can easily fix that by going to app.js and then inside of here, instead of rendering the auth, we first want to check if the user is logged in. And we can do that because we are storing our user's information in local storage. So I'm gonna switch this from a parenthesis to a code block and I'm going to put all of this part inside of the return of this component. So just here, we're gonna have a return and we're gonna put all of the code here. But before we do that, we're gonna have a const user, which is equal to json.parse. And we want to parse the local storage dot get item, and we want to get the profile. That way we'll have the access to the user variable. Now, depending on the state of the user, we can render something different here instead of the odd. So we can have a callback function. And then there we can say if no user, then we want to render the auth component. That makes sense, right? We want to render the auth if the user isn't logged in. But if they are, we simply want to redirect the user. So redirect, that is a self-closing component that's going to point to forward slash posts. Just like this. Let's see if I have that correctly. That looks fine to me. So now if we go back and if I try going to forward slash auth, it's simply going to redirect me back to posts. Great. That was our refactor of the app.js component. Now we can start with the refactor of the home component so that we can accommodate it to use the pagination. Let's navigate to the home component and let's see what changes do we have to make. There are going to be quite a few because a home component is going to be a really important component that's going to handle the logic for the pagination and some other stuff. So let's make our life easier by first importing all of the things we're gonna use. We're going to import a few things from Material UI and those are going to be the app bar, the text field. We're gonna also use a button and finally a paper, which we already have right there. Then we're going to import some things from React Router DOM. These things are going to be called use history and also use location. We're going to use that so that we know on which page are we currently. And we're going to use the history so that we can re-navigate to certain pages and search terms. That's going to be imported from, and that is going to be React Router DOM. Inside of here, we're going to also use something known as a chip input. And we're going to import the chip input from, and that is going to be material UI chip input. Chip input is a normal input, but it works great for tags. Let me show you what I mean. Right here on the top right, I can search for tags. Let's do Europe. And you can see this is not a general input, this is a chip input. So it turns it into this spill-like structure. We can also search for Asia, we can search for USA, and all of these are going to be in so-called chips. So that is what we'll be using for our tags. 
we also have to set up our URL search params. We're gonna use that to know on which page are we currently on and what search term are we looking for. To do that, React Router DOM says to use a function and call it use query. That use query is just a normal function. And in there, we are returning new URL search params. We call it and pass use location, which we call again and call the dot search after that. That simply allows us to use it as a hook. So we can simply say const query is equal to use query as you're used to. We also have the use history. So we can say const history is equal to use history. Query is where we'll be getting our page info from. So you can say something like const page is equal to query dot get. And then in here, we can say page. So this is going to read our URL and see if we have a page parameter in there. If so, it's going to populate this variable. So we can say that or one. So if you don't have the page, we must be on the first one. Finally, we're also going to have a search query. So we can say const search query is going to be equal to query.get and that's going to be search query. Great, now we have some of the things that are necessary and now let's modify our JSX. The first thing that we're going to modify is that we're going to have our container and that container is going to have a max width equal to XL. Then we have this grid container and the only thing we're gonna do with it is we're gonna give it a class name. The class name is going to be equal to classes dot grid container. For now, we don't have classes, but don't worry, we're gonna import them really soon. Then we're gonna have our grid item and in this case, we're going to make it a bit more mobile responsive by saying take 12 spaces on mobile, then take half the screen on a bit larger devices, and finally on medium devices, so take three quarters of the screen. On bigger screens, we want our posts to take most of the screen. Finally, on this screen where we have our options like the form and the pagination, we can leave this as 12, then on small devices, that's gonna take the half the screen, and on medium devices, it's the screen is big enough, so three spaces are going to be just enough. Finally, we're gonna make this look a bit better because now we have the form, we have the paper, pagination, and soon enough, we're gonna have the search as well. So let's add something known as the app bar. App bar is going to have a class name equal to classes.appbarsearch. It's also going to have the position, which is going to be equal to static, and it's going to have the color, which is going to be equal to inherit. Inside of that app bar, we're gonna have our search. So inside of there, we can create a text field that's going to serve as our search. The text field is going to be a self-closing component, and it's going to have quite a few properties. The first one is going to be the name, which is going to be equal to search. Then it's going to have a variant, which is going to be equal to outlined. Then it's also going to have a label. Our label is simply going to be something like search memories. We have many props for text fields, so I'm gonna put them all in separate line. And then we're also gonna have a full width prop. We're also gonna have the value, which is going to be equal to a search. For now, we can say something like test. Then we're also gonna have the on change property, which is going to change our value. So for now, I'm gonna leave it as an empty function like this, and that's going to be it. So now let's add our classes and we'll be able to see how this looks like in action. As you know, the procedure for adding classes is similar. So we can simply say import use styles from dot slash styles. That's it. And finally, we need to create the styles.js file inside of the home folder. As always, to save your time, I'm gonna simply give you the code, give you the styles to simply copy and paste them. It's nothing special, adding some border radiuses, some display flexes, padding, margin, and so on. Nothing scary you should worry about, but just to save some times, you'll be able to find all the styles I mentioned in this video down in the description. So just go ahead, find the link, and paste them right in here. Once you're done with that, we need to call our use styles as a hook. So we can say const classes is equal to use styles and we call it like a function. 
Now, if we save this, we shouldn't have any errors and we can check it out in the browser. And that already looks so much better. Take a look. Now on big screens, our posts are taking more of the width and we have our search on the right side, which already looks good. Of course, we cannot currently type in it because we have a constant value. In React, we have to manage the fields using state. So let's create a state field for our search memories field. We can scroll just a bit up and then in here we can say const search and set search is going to be equal to use state. And then inside of that state, the default value is going to be an empty string. Now let's use that state variable and put it right here instead of this static test value. And let's do something on change. So what do we have to do on change? Well, we get the event and then inside of there, we can say set search is equal to e.target.value. That's going to allow us to change the value of the search. One thing that I often prefer is not having the need for a button. So we also want to make something happen if we click the enter key. So let me show you how we can do that. We can add just one more thing onto this text field, which is going to be called on key press. And then on key press, we're going to create a function called handle key press. That function is going to be just right here below this use effect, const handle key press. It's going to accept an event that's going to be a key press event. And we can simply say if e dot key code is equal to 13, in that case, we want to do something. We'll want to search for the post. For now, we don't have to logic to search for the post, but I'm going to add the comment search post right here so that we can add it later on. Key code 13 simply means the enter key. So to know if the key code is 13, you pressed enter. Great. Now, before we add the search post functionality, I also want to add the JSX for the search by tags. To do that, we're going to use the chip input we imported at the top. Our chip input is also going to be a self-closing tag and it's going to accept a few properties. First, it's going to accept some styles. You can have an object in there and say margin is equal to and then a string of 10 pixels top and bottom and zero pixels left and right. We also need a value for our search and this value also needs to be dynamic. It has to be from state. So let's scroll to the top and let's create a tags state field. I'm going to simply copy this line, replace this for tags and set tags. And at the start, it's not going to be an empty string. It's rather going to be an empty array because we want to have multiple tags. Now scrolling down, we can add the value of tags. We're also going to have the on add function and the on delete function. For now, we're going to leave this as empty and we're going to populate them soon. We also need to have the label, which is going to be equal to search tags. And we also need to have a variant, which is going to be equal to outlined, just so it matches the text field. On add, we're going to call the function called handle add. And then on delete, we're going to call a function called handle delete. And of course, we have to create those functions. So scrolling a bit up right in here, we're going to create that function const handle add, and it's going to accept a tag as a parameter. Finally, what we have to do is we have to call the set tags state. And then inside of there, we're going to have an array as the state. When you have an array with states, you first have to spread the previous tags and then add the new tag onto it. This is how we're going to handle the add tag. And finally, let's also handle the delete. So we can say handle delete. That is also going to accept a tag, but more specifically tag to delete. And what we have to do is we also have to set tags but inside of there, we're going to say tags.filter, where we get one specific tag. We can put it like this tag. And we want to filter out the tag to delete. So we can say if tag is not equal to tag to delete, we're going to keep all the other ones, but we're only going to delete the tag we want to delete. Now let's add that there. We have a handle delete and a handle add function. Let's save it and see how does it look like. As you can see, we have search memories and we have search tags. 
Let's try adding test. A tag appears. Let's try test one. Test one appears. And we can finally test it by deleting them, which also works. Final thing, of course, is to add a button that's going to do something with those inputs. A button is not going to be a self-closing tag. It's going to have the on click property. And on click, we want to do something. And that something is search post. Search post is a function we haven't created yet. So then we can create a class name, which is going to be equal to classes dot search button. And we can also have a color, which is equal to primary. Finally, inside of the button, we're going to say search. Now, if we save this and take a look, it's not going to work because this is undefined. So we have to create that search post function. We can create a search post right here below the use effect. So const search post is equal to a function which doesn't accept any parameters. Inside of there, we want to see if we have a search term. So we can say if search. Uh, this search maybe is not the best name. A better name would be something like search term or title or something like that. But in this case, it's search. And we also want to trim it to make sure there are no empty spaces. So if we have a search term, then finally we want to dispatch some logic to fetch our search post. So fetch search post. Great. Of course, to dispatch this, we're going to have to use Redux and we're going to have to modify our database to only search for specific posts. And else, if we don't have a search term, then we're going to simply use the history object and call the push method to forward slash. We just want to redirect back because we have searched for nothing. And as you can see here, we have this comment. We also want to call for the search post function right inside of here if we press the enter key. Now that we have this, let's take a look in the browser. We have our two inputs, but the search button doesn't look right. Looks like we're missing something. The thing we're missing is going to be the variant equal to contained. Let's save it and take a look. Search memories, search tags, and a search button. But of course, if we search something right now, nothing is going to happen. But now comes the hard part. We have to tell the database to only return us the posts that match our query. To send a nice message to the database, we can use Redux. So let's first create a Redux action and a reducer to manage our posts. This patch is the verb that we use with actions. So to have something to dispatch, we need to create an action for searching the posts. To do that, we can open up our file explorer, go to actions, posts, and then inside of there, just below our previous get posts, we want to create an action called get post by search. So we can say export const get posts by search. That is going to be a function and it's going to have this syntax as you can see as all the previous actions do. We're using Redux Thunk for asynchronous actions. And again, tab nine does a wonderful job of just immediately filling this out for me. Again, the link is going to be down in the description so you can check out tab nine, maybe install it as a Visual Studio Code extension. And let's see, how do we want to fetch the data? Well, as before, we're gonna have a try and catch block. So let's create it, try and catch. And then in the try, we want to do something like const where we get the data. Inside of the try block, we want to try to communicate to our backend. So we can say const, we destructure the data, and that is going to be equal to await API dot fetch posts by search, which is a function. Of course, our get post by search is going to accept a search query as a parameter. And we're going to pass that same search query to our API request. For now, we're simply going to console log the data. And we're also going to console log the error if there ever is one. Now we have to go to our file explorer, API, and then index.js because we have to create the API endpoint called fetch posts by search. So let's go right there. And then just below fetch posts, we can create our fetch posts by search. It's going to be really similar. So we can say export const fetch posts by search. This time it's going to be a function, but it's going to accept a parameter of search query. 
Finally, we'll be making an API.get request to forward slash posts, but we have to provide some information about our search. The endpoint is going to be forward slash posts forward slash search, but now inside of there, we're gonna use query parameters. Query parameters start with a question mark and then you specify a variable name, search query. And that search query has to be equal to something. So for example, you can pass a static value of test, but we're gonna make it dynamic. So I'm gonna make this into a dynamic template string. And then we're gonna use the dollar sign curly braces syntax to make this equal to be search query dot, and then we're gonna use the search. And if there is no search, then we can say or simply do a string of none. But we also want to add something else. So after that, we can say end, and now we want to handle our tags. It's going to be the similar situation. Tags are equal to, and then inside of there, we can say search query dot tags. And now we're sending all of the information to our search endpoint. Great, now we have our endpoint and we also have our action. So we can go back to where we were, to home, and then from here, we can dispatch that action. We can first import it right here. It's called get posts by search. And finally, we can use it right here in the same way we used get posts. That is going to be equal to dispatch. We pass the get posts by search and we call it as a function. But remember, this action is going to take in some parameters. More specifically, it is going to take the search query object as we specified. Inside of that search query, we have to provide our search, which is coming from state, as you can see here. But we also have to provide tags, which we have to render into a string, because we cannot pass an array through the URL parameters. Because of that, we're going to do tags is equal to tags that join, and we're going to join them by a comma. That way, if we have an array of something like, let's say that we have tags of Europe and let's say USA, that is going to be equal to a string of Europe and then comma USA. If that way, we'll be able to more easily pass the data from the front end to the back end. Now we have the action, we are dispatching that action, we're making an API request. Let's just remember to which endpoint. To forward slash posts, forward slash search, with some parameters. So let's create that endpoint on the backend side. We can go to our server folder and inside of our server, we are going to go into routes. We first have to create that post route. We can create it just above our get posts. And remember, it is going to be to forward slash search. Before we said it's gonna be forward slash posts, forward slash search. But remember, since we are in the post.js file, all of these routes begin with post, even though you cannot see it right here. Okay, and on the search route, we want to call a specific controller. So just at the top, we can import it, get posts by search, and we're gonna call it once we get to that route. And finally, we have to create a controller where most of the logic will happen. So let's go to the controllers, posts, and then just below the get posts we currently have, we're gonna create a new controller, export const get posts by search. That is going to be an async function. Of course, we have the rec and the rest in there. And we also have a try and catch block. Now we want to retrieve that data from the rec.query. Remember that I mentioned params, but params and query are actually two different things. Let me explain what I mean. When we have a query, that usually means that the route goes like this. Forward slash posts, question mark, page is equal to one. In this case, we would have a query where page variable is equal to one. But if we have something known as params, in that case, our route would look like this. Forward slash posts, and then forward slash colon ID. In, in here, you would be able to put your specific ID, let's say one, two, three. And in that case, the populated variable ID would be equal to one, two, three. 
both ways are fully okay. Usually we use query if you want to, well, query some data like search and we use params if you want to get some specific resource like posts and then forward slash ID of the post. I hope that makes sense and that I explained it in a nice and easy to understand way. If you like the way I explain things, make sure to leave a like and let me know in the comments. I really appreciate that. And if you really want to be generous, there is a buy me a coffee link in the description and that really allows me to keep creating more great videos for you guys. With that said, let's keep creating the logic for the search. Right at the top, we're gonna get the data from the query we just talked about. Const, we get the search query, and we also get the tags because these are the two things that we passed, and we get them from reg that query. Now let's convert our title into a regular expression by saying const title is equal to new reg exp, and then in there, we're gonna pass our search query and a flag of i. i stands for ignore case. That means that if you search for something like test or test or test, it's all gonna be the same. It's not gonna matter. And we want to do that. We want to get all the posts that match our search term. We converted it into a regular expression in the first place because that way it's easier for MongoDB and Mongoose to search the database. So let's search the database for posts by saying const posts is equal to await post message dot find. Now in here, we have to write that query, which is a bit more complicated, but don't worry. Inside of here, we can open a block of code where we're gonna have the dollar sign or. That or stands for either find me the title or find me the tags. We want to find the posts that match either or. So we can make that into an array. And then the first thing in there is going to be the title. So we're matching for the title. The second thing in that array is going to be the tags. We want to match the tags. But keep in mind, there is an array of tags. So inside of there, we're gonna open another object. I know it's getting a bit complicated. And we're gonna say in. Is there a tag in this specific array of tags that matches our query? In there, we can say in tags that split. And now we have to split them by a comma because remember before we joined it, just so we can send it over in a nice string. I know it's a bit complicated, but let me try to explain it one more time in plain English. Find me all the posts that match one of those two criteria. The first one is the title. Is the title the same as we typed it on the front end? And the second one is is one of the tags in the array of tags equal to our tags? If that's the case, then we want to display those posts. Finally, once we have the posts, we have to say res.json and then in there we'll have an object where data is going to be equal to posts and we're sending that back to the front end. Finally, if we have an error, we can simply return it to the front end by saying res.status, that's going to be a 404 dot json and there we're gonna have an object that has a message equal to error dot message so now let's go back to our action creator and check if we're receiving the data that's going to be right back to our actions in here and we'll have to destructure the data two times first time because we're making an axios request and the second time because we put it in a new object where it has the data property just like this Finally, we're console logging the data right here. So let's go back to the browser and see if all the logic that we wrote right now actually works. Usually it is a miracle when everything works first time, but who knows, let's give it a shot. So I opened up a console. I am on my localhost 3000 forward slash posts. And I wanna search for the word the, because we have it a few times in the Colosseum we also have the Acropolis. So let's see if it finds it. I'm gonna click search and take a look at that. We got back an array with four different objects representing four different posts. The first one has the message of the most famous, as you can see it right there, the Colosseum. Then we have the Acropolis. Taj Mahal also has the word the, and finally, the most famous Paris Museum also has the word the. So that means that it works. 
Now let's see if our tags work. I'm gonna remove this and then in there, I'm gonna type something like Europe. If I search now, we should get one more response, but unfortunately, I don't see anything. So let's go back to our search form and see why is our search button not working for tags. This is going to be a good debugging session. Opponent responsible for our search is going to be our home. And right in here, you can see that we indeed are dispatching the get post by search, but it's a simple logical error. I'm simply saying if there is a search term, then dispatch, but we have to make it if there is a search term or if there are tags. If we just add that, that should fix the problem. Search for something like USA and click search. We get three posts back. This is going to be the Statue of Liberty in New York. Then we have the Grand Canyon. And finally, we have Niagara Falls, which is bordering the USA and Canada. If that means that our tag completely works, we're seeing the data in the console, but now let's make it display that data and change the URL on the client side. Doing that won't be that hard because we already set up most of the logic. To finalize it, you can go to the components and then to our home component. Inside of here, after the dispatch get posed by search, we only want to do one more thing. And that is to use the history.push method to push our website to a specific URL. More specifically, we want to go to forward slash posts, forward slash search, question mark. Remember, question mark is for the search query parameters. We can say search query is going to be equal to search, right? The search is something that's coming from the state or none. We can use a string of none if there is no search. And then finally, we're going to use the and symbol to set the tags. Tags are going to be equal to tags.join and we're going to join the tags by using a comma. Remember, we had to split them and then join them to use them again. Great, this seems okay to me. So let's see if we are being pushed to that specific URL. If I go in here and use the the as an example, as well as the Europe as a tag, let's see what are we going to be pointed to. As you can see, our URL changed. Search query is now equal to the and tags is equal to Europe. We're going we're gonna to use that to form our posts. But why does this URL on the client side even matter? We formed it for the backend, okay. But why do we need it on the front end? Well, let's say that you search for some memories and you want to send to your friend only the specific search term with the terms and the tags already put there. That way you can simply copy this, paste it over, and he's going to get the relevant information. That's why we need client-side routing. Okay, so now let's display those posts. To display the posts, we're going to go back to actions and we have them right in here. So we have to do a similar thing to what we are doing right here in get posts. I'm going to copy this and we're going to do it in the same way, but we're going to rename our dispatch action type. So let's create a new one by going to constants action types. I'm going to copy this line and we're going to change it just a bit to something like fetch by search. Great. So now we have one more constant. We're going to go back in here. I'm going to import it, fetch by search, and we're going to use it right inside of here. And again, we're sending the data to our reducers. So let's go to our reducers, posts, and then right inside of here, we're going to add one more case. That case is going to be fetch by search and we can also import it right at the top. Now that we have that case, of course, we want to return something if that happens. So we're going to return a similar thing. In this case, it's just going to be action dot payload. Now, let's see what we're missing. If I add that there, that should be working. Let's go check it out. We're back to just forward slash posts, but I'm going to search for something like Asia. I'm going to click search. And as you can see, now we got all the posts that have something to do with Asia, Asia right there, 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 and everywhere. 
That is great. That means that our search works. We can also try it by the title. If I click search, it's going to take a bit. And as you can see, we have all of the posts that have the in the title. That means that our search works perfectly. Now that we have that done, before moving on to pagination and loading states, let's do something easier, like changing the background and the logo at the top. And then inside of there, I'm going to remove both of these background colors. And we're simply going to say background color is going to be equal to hash symbol and then F7, F8, FC. This is a whitish color, almost pure white. Now, if we save that and go back, you can see it looks a bit more professional, maybe a bit plain. Right now, both the background and the card are pretty much white. So to make some separation, let's add some elevation to the card. We can do that by going to posts, post, and then finally post.js, finding our card component. And then inside of there, we're going to say raised and also set the elevation to be equal to six. That's going to add this nice shadow that you can see at the bottom of the card, which separates it from the background. I can also see that we still have only two cards per row. So let's make it like it was at the start of the video. To do that, we're going to go to post.js this time. And then inside of here, we're going to say show one, which is 12 spaces on extra small devices still show one on small devices, on medium devices show two per row, but on large devices show four per row. That's three times four is equal to 12. And that is four per row. Let's see how does it look like. This is already so much better. In my opinion, everything fits on one screen. As you can see, we currently have no pagination. So we have quite a long list of posts. Now that we've changed the color, the things that jumps out a bit too much is the memories logo at the top. So let's change that as well. To change it, we're going to go to the nav bar. And right in here, instead of this memories PNG, we have to add two new ones. I'm simply going to open the images folder, and then I'm going to paste it. The links to download both of these are going to be in the description so that you can download them as well. But once you actually do that, we can go back to our nav bar. And inside of there, we're going to have memories logo imported from memories logo. And we're also going to have memories text imported from memories text. Now we can use those two images to make it look a bit more professional. We can do that right in here. We're no longer going to use this typography. So we can delete it. We are going to use two different images. The first one is going to be the image self closing tag. Right inside of there, the SRC of that image is going to be memories text like that. And it's also going to have the alt tag of icon. It's going to have the alt tag of icon. And it's going to have the height equal to 45 pixels. The one on the bottom is going to have the class name of classes that image, it's going to have the source of memories logo, and the height is going to be equal to 40 pixels. Finally, once we have that, we want to transform this div into a link. So I'm going to say link there, more specifically, link to, and then we want to point to just slash. Now let's save that and see how does it look like in the browser. There we go. This custom logo just gives this project a bit more character. I can see that the second image is a bit higher up than the first one. So we can go to the styles and I'm going to leave this style as well. You can simply override it. It's going to be down in the description. I've made only a few small changes since the last video. But then again, make sure to copy and paste it just so we're on the same page. If you go back to the browser, you'll notice that now they're aligned. Now that they've made the application look a bit better, and now that the search is fully functional, we can focus on pagination and loading states. Currently, if I go back to the home, there won't be any loading. It's going to happen instantly, but take a look. We only have three posts and now they pop up. So something doesn't seem right. It's always good to have proper loading states so that your user knows that something is happening.
So pagination and loading states coming up. We already worked a bit with getting the page and the search query from the query parameters. But now let's put that page to use. We will no longer fetch the post from here, from the home. We're going to remove this use effect and we're going to pass our page straight to our pagination as a prop. So in here, we're going to say page is equal to page. That way we can go to our pagination and we can get it straight from props. Now inside of here, we can create a new use effect. So I'm going to say import use effect from react and we're going to declare it right in here. Our use effect, as always, it is a function with a callback function and has a dependency array. So what do we want to do inside of that use effect? Well, we want to fetch the posts anytime that the page changes. To fetch the posts, as always, we're going to use our dispatch with Redux. So we need to import a few things from React Redux. We can say import, and that is going to be use dispatch. So we can dispatch things and also use selector so that we can select some things from our state. And this is going to be imported from React dash Redux. We also want to import an action called get posts. So we're going to say import get posts, and that's going to be coming from dot dot slash actions forward slash posts. Of course, to get our dispatch function, we can say const dispatch is equal to use dispatch and then call it as a function. Now, inside of this use effect, we can say run it every time that the page changes. So every time that the page changes, if there is a page, in that case, we want to dispatch a specific action. In this case, we want to dispatch the get posts action. And let's open up that action side by side here, just so you can see how it looks like. Get posts, you can see it accepts no parameters and in its current form, it fetches all of the posts. But that's not how we want it to behave. We want to pass a page to it so that it only fetches the posts for that specific page. And that's exactly what we're going to do. Right inside of there, we're going to pass that page in. Now inside of our actions, we can accept that page as a parameter. Once we have it as a parameter, we can then pass it over to our API as well. So inside of here, we can pass that page. Of course, now we have to go to that API and make some use of it. So let's open it up in full screen. As you can see, fetch posts, but now that function accepts a page and we can use that page to then filter it out. So we can say api.get forward slash posts, and then it's going to be question mark, page is equal to dollar sign curly braces, page that we're getting from the parameters. Of course, we have to turn this into a template string. And that's it. Now we're passing the data to the backend, just so we know on which page are we currently on. Now let's go to the backend and modify our controller so that it returns only the data for that specific page. That's going to be inside of the server. And then finally, inside of the posts controllers. Inside of here, we have our get posts, but that's basically now get posts by page. We can do similar thing that we did with reg.query. We're going to say const, destructure the page, and that's going to be coming from rec that query because we are passing it through the query from the front end. Now we're going to have some extra logic in here just before we call the dot find on posts. First, we're going to declare a variable called limit. The limit is going to be the number of posts per page. I decided to make it eight, but you can change it if you want to. Then we have to get a start index of a post on a specific page. For example, the start index of the first post on the third page would be eight plus eight plus eight minus one because we start from zero and that would be 23. So let's create that. First, we have to convert our page into a number using the number constructor. Even though the page is a number on the front end, when we pass it through the reg.query, it becomes a string, so we have to convert it back. 
And now we're simply going to deduct minus one from that. And finally, multiply all of that by the limit. This way, we're always going to get the start index of the post on a specific page. We can even write a comment right there, get the starting index of every page. Great. Finally, we also need one more variable, which is const total. That is going to be equal to await post message dot count documents. We want to count up all the documents so that we always know how many documents do we have? How many posts do we have? Why do we need to know that? Well, depending on that, we're going to have a specific number of pages and we always need to know what is the last page we can scroll to. That's why we have the total variable. Now that we have the total, finally is the time to fetch the posts. So I'm going to rename this from post messages to posts and let's see how we can do it. Well, we can say await post message dot find. Then I want to get the posts from the newest to the oldest. Because of that, we have to sort them by ID. So I'm going to say dot sort. We're going to pass in an object and say underscore ID is equal to minus one. This is going to give us the newest posts first. Then I also want to limit them. So we're going to call the dot limit on that. And we're going to pass in the limit variable. This is going to make sure to only give us, for example, eight or 10 or, or however many you choose per page. And then finally, we need to skip all the previous pages. For example, if you're on the page two, you don't want to fetch first 16 posts again, you want to skip the first eight. And because of that, we're going to use the dot skip. And we're going to skip all the way to the start index. Now we understand why did we have to create all these variables, it all makes sense, hopefully. Finally, for all of this to make sense to the front end, we have to pass a bit more data than simply posts. So I'm going to pass a new object. And inside of that object, we're going to say data, and the data is going to be equal to posts. We also have to pass the current page, which is going to be equal to number of the page. So we just make it into a number and we pass that page. And finally, we also want to have the total number of pages. That is going to be equal to math.seal. And in there, we're going to divide the total by the limit. Great, that is going to give us the total number of pages. Now we're passing all of that data back to the front end, and we have to make use of it. Of course, where better to do that than in the action that we declared. So I'm going to go back to our posts action. Before we were getting just the data for the posts and we were immediately passing it here. But now that data is going to contain more info. So let's see what is contained in that data object. If I open up the console, the current page is one, the total number of pages is three, and this should have been pages, plural. So I'm going to go back and just change that to pages. What we had before was simply a variable that contained all the posts. That means that we have to change the way our reducers view and render things. The only thing you have to keep in mind here is that our payload is no longer just posts. It's an object that contains three different things. As we saw previously, it contains the data of posts. It contains the current page and also the number of pages. Let's go to our reducers, which is going to be in here, reducers and posts. Instead of simply returning the action that payload, we have to return an object. So right there, I'll say return, put that into an object. And then I want to spread the current state. These posts here are going to be more than simply an array of posts. So I'm going to rename this to state, you'll see soon enough why. First, we want to always spread the state when we're working with objects, then we want to get our posts. And now posts are not simply action that payload posts are equal to action dot payload dot data. Then we also have a current page, our current page is going to be equal to action dot payload dot current page. And finally, we have number of 
pages, which is going to be equal to number of pages. Again, tab nine really autofill that easily. Great. So now we're turning something different from the fetch all reducer. It would be great if we immediately also accommodated the fetch by search in the same fashion. So in the fetch by search, we also have to make it an object. Inside of that object, we're going to spread the state. And then we're going to say posts are equal to action dot payload dot data. You can also see that we are mentioning the posts a few more times here. I'm just going to replace all of these with state, considering that I renamed it at the top right here. In our fetch by search, this is not going to be action payload data, it's going to be simply action payload. That's where we have our posts. Considering that we've changed the structure of our state, we have to find where are we actually using that state so that we can change it there as well. Let's search for use selector that points to us using the state. We can see that it's being used in pagination, but we're never actually doing anything with it. Then it's also being used right in here in the form. And finally, this is the one we're looking for use selector in the posts. Here is where we are using the posts. Before we simply had an array of posts. But now we have an object where we have a property of posts inside of there. So we have to destructure the posts right in here. And the main reason we change this from an array to an object with multiple things is because we are going to have multiple things. We're going to have the is loading property, we're going to have the number of pages and so on. But for now, we simply need to destructure this. We can also add a question mark here to make sure to not throw an error if we don't have any posts available. Now let's save that. And let's see if this is going to work. We are back on our memories project. And would you look at that, we can see all of our posts. That's great. Let's see if we can also see the posts that we search for. For example, let's search for Europe again. And it works, we waited a bit, but it finally gave me the posts. That's great. But that's something that worked before, right? So why even check it? Well, we checked it because we changed a lot of things. And you want to make sure that when you change some big things, you check if you've broken anything. But now is the time to check the pagination. It's not going to work yet. Because even though we implemented all the logic for it, we have to do one more step. And that is use that logic inside of the pagination component. So let's go back to it and do it. Inside of the pagination component, we can now use this use selector to get the number of pages. To do that, we can say const the structure number of pages and make that equal to use selector. Inside of there, we have a callback function where we get the posts and we want to retrieve state dot posts. That is the reducer that's going to have the access to the number of pages. Finally, we want to use that number of pages variable right in here under count number of pages. Only that we also have the access to the current page right in here. So we can simply say right there, number and page. And just to be sure if we don't have a page, we want to render or one to be on the first page. I also noticed that right now I specified right there use select that is going to be use selector. Also in here, posts page one, in there, we want to navigate to item dot page. With these small changes, we've made our pagination component completely dynamic. Let's see if it works. Going back to the browser, first thing that you can see is that we have only three pages. And that is correct, because we have less than 24 posts. Let's try to go to the second page. As you can see, the URL changed. And even though it seemed for a second that nothing is happening because we don't have the loading yet, it worked. We got the second batch of posts. Finally, let's go to the third page. And there we go. We got five more posts. That means that our pagination fully works. So we can switch between the pages and we can render only eight at a time. This is incredibly important. Imagine that your application is used by hundreds or even thousands of users and that each user creates tens or even hundreds of posts. 
Imagine if your application had to load all 10,000 posts at once. It would take so much time, but why even do it when you can only see 8 at once? That is why we use the pagination to cut down on load time. Anyway, great work, pagination seems to be done, at least from what I can see right now, hopefully there aren't any bugs, and now we can move to the loading states. To start working on our loading states, you can head to Posts Actions. Redux makes it quite easy to have one central source of truth, so that we always know are we loading or are we not. That's why we're going to use Redux to accomplish the loading states. So right inside of here, we're first going to create two more constants, action types. Right in here, I'm going to create the export const start loading. That's going to be equal to a string of start loading. And then finally, we're going to have one more, which is going to be called end loading. We're going to use this action types so that our Redux reducers know when to start and stop loading. We can go back to our action posts and we're going to import them right here at the top. Start loading and end loading. The only question we have to ask ourselves is when do we want to start loading? Well, as soon as we call get posts, just before we try fetching the posts, right in there, we can say dispatch. And the only thing we want to dispatch is an action that has a type of start loading. That's going to be it. And when do we want to end the loading? Well, it definitely has to be after we fetched all the posts, which is going to be right here, dispatch type and loading. Of course, we want to have the loading states in a few more places. Also, when we try to get posts by search and so on. So we can copy this start loading and we can paste it in a few more places. Before we try to get posts by search, we want to have it there. We also want to have it before we create a post. On update, we're not going to go anywhere. We're just going to update it so we don't have to have it there. For the like, that's the same thing. And for the delete, that's also the same thing. These actions by themselves are not doing anything. We have to go to our reducers and then there create the logic for our loading states. Inside of here, we're going to also import start loading and end loading. Or is it stop loading? Let me see how I called it. It's start loading and then we have the end loading. I also forgot to put it here at the end of the fetch by search. So I'm going to import it and loading. And now we have to add it here at the top. So what happens if we want to start the loading? Also, what happens if we want to end the loading? We're going to prepare those cases. And let's see what data do we want to return? Well, of course, we want to return an object as we always do. We want to spread the state that we currently have. And we only want to change the state of one variable. And that is, is loading is going to be equal to true if we want to start the loading. And then we can copy this and paste it below. Same thing, but we're going to change the is loading state to be false. That's all that you have to do to manage loading in Redux. You don't have to do it everywhere in your code, in all of the components, whenever you do something, cut through the logic with changing the state. You only do it here and everything is being done right here inside of actions. It might be a bit confusing at the start, but as you get more into it, you'll start seeing the purpose in that. Back in reducers, considering we changed the way we view data, we also have to change this state. The state is no longer just going to be an array of posts. It's going to be an object that's going to have the is loading property. And that is loading is initially going to be set to true. And also we're going to have the posts array. Great. Now that we've changed this, we also have to change how do we get the data back once we like create, update or delete posts. The only thing we have to do is we have to everywhere spread the state. So right here, I'm going to try to select multiple lines by holding alt and clicking at the start of each line. Right there, I'm going to open up an object. And first thing that we want to do everywhere is we want to spread the state as we always did. Finally, once we spread the state, we want to set the posts inside of that state to be equal to what we previously had right there. And then finally, make sure to add the closing bracket at the end here, here, 
here and here. I know that it might be just a bit confusing, but we are basically switching from using just posts as an array to having an object that now contains the is loading state as well as the post state. So that's why we have to turn this into an object, spread the entire state, and then finally only return the posts. And also notice how we're doing state.map, spreading the state, state.map, state.filter, that's no longer going to be possible. Rather, we have to do state and then dot posts and then dot map or dot filter or anything. So just to fix this, we're doing state dot posts dot map, we're spreading state dot posts, state dot posts dot map and state dot posts dot filter. These are going to be all the changes that we have to do with Redux. It is sometimes confusing, I completely understand that, but it's going to help us in the long run by maintaining one state of truth. That said, we can now actually start using the is loading state. We can start in the posts.js file. So we can open up our components and go to posts, post.js. Inside of here, from the use selector, we're also gonna grab that state is loading. And now based on that state, we can show some data. So we're gonna replace this for if is loading, in that case, we want to show our circular progress, which is that loading state. And we also want to add one if statement and say if there are no posts that length, meaning if there are no posts in the array, and if we're not loading, in that case, we want to return something that says no posts. Because if we don't have any posts and we are not currently loading, that means we're not going to load them. They don't exist. Great, so let's save that and see it in action. I'm gonna reload the page and take a look at that. We have this nice loading state at the top left. Of course, you can style it a bit more, make it big and make it in the center of the whole post, but it's fine enough, we see it on the top right corner. Now take a look what happens when I paginate. It simply tells the user, hey, I'm doing something, wait a second. And it's so nice to have that visual feedback. It makes your app look so much more professional. Same thing happens if we search something like the here. And also same thing happens if we go for tags like Asia. There we go, we have nice loading and only then do we see our posts. And as you can see, it works with searching the titles, searching the tags, doing the pagination or simply getting all the posts. That's why I like using Redux when you want to have one source of truth. Of course, you could have used context as well. And if that's your preference, feel free to refactor this application from Redux to using context. We can go to the home component. And right in here, you should see that this is the place where we are rendering our pagination and the paper wrapping it. First things first, I don't always want to display the pagination. I only want to display it if we are viewing the content by pages. But if you're doing the search, I'm going to assume that the user doesn't have a lot of posts to search from, like 10, 20, or 30. In that way, we don't need to paginate. So what we can do is we can wrap this into a dynamic block and say, if we don't currently have a search query, and if we don't have any tags, so we can do tags.length, in that case, we want to show our pagination. So one more time, let me just put this in here. If we don't have a search query, and if we don't have tags, in that case, I want to render the pagination. If we have the search or the tags, in that case, we don't want to render the pagination. Now that we have that, we can also add the class name here, and that's going to be classes.pagination. Let's save that and see it in action. There we go. As soon as I save that, you can see it looks just a bit better. It is displayed right there. Let's try to sign in to see how does it look like with the form. There we go. Looks extremely good. There we go. It looks extremely good. I also see that we don't have this shadow on the form. So let's add it as well right there. I'm going to search for creating a memory right in here. Search creating a memory. And there I can see that that is in the form file. So I can just add the elevation equal to six to this specific paper. If I go back, you can see that even the form now has the shadow 
and all the elements in the page have shadow to make them pop up from the background. Our pagination is working. Our search is working. Our design is good. What else do we have to do? Well, of course, we have to implement the dynamic memory details page. When you click on the memory, we want to display everything about that memory in a nice view. So let's do that right now. To implement the memory details page, we first have to see what's going to happen when we click on a specific post. To figure that out, we're going to go to posts and then post right in here. That's not post details, it's just the post component. So we have to make something happen once we click on this card. And the thing we're going to do is we're going to import one more thing from Material UI, which is going to be the button base. And just below this card, we're going to add a button base component. We're going to give it a class name, which is equal to classes.cardAction. And it's also going to have the onClick property. On click, what do we want to do? Well, we want to open the post. We don't have a lot of props, so I'm going to put them in one line. And finally, the ending tag of this has to go below the card content. So I'm going to copy it and put it just below the card content, but still above the card actions. Great. Open post is not defined, so let's define it. Const open post is going to be equal to, to an arrow function for now. So how is this open post going to work? Well, it's going to be incredibly simple. The only thing we want to do is we want to navigate to a specific URL. So to do that, we have to import use history from React Router DOM. Import use history. And that's going to be from React Router DOM. We already learned that we have to call it as a hook, which is going to be const history is equal to use history. And then finally, inside of the open post, we can simply say history dot push. And then we're going to push to forward slash posts forward slash and then post dot underscore ID. So you're pushing to the ID of the post that is currently selected. And everything else is going to be done for us in that post details page. So we know that if we go to forward slash posts forward slash ID, if we go to our app, you can see posts ID belongs to the post details page. So everything else will have to be done in here and in Redux actions. This is going to be a fairly large component. So let's start right away. We first want to import react and we also want to import the use effect from react. Then we want to import a few things from material UI and those things are going to be paper, typography, we also want to have the circular progress for loading and finally the divider. And this is going to be imported from at material UI forward slash core. Then we also want to import a few things from react redux and that's going to be the use dispatch as well as the use selector to get the data about the post. As I said, these are coming from react dash redux. Then we want to import moment from moment. Moment is a JS library that deals with time. And finally, we want to import a few things from React Router DOM. Those things are use params and also use history from React Router DOM. Great. We also have some styles, so we can say import use styles, and that's going to be from that slash styles. As you can see, we don't yet have that file, so let's create a new file, styles.js. And as always, I'm going to provide you with all the styles. You can simply copy and paste them right in here. They're going to be down in the description. While you're scrolling to the description, make sure to leave a like and leave a comment for the YouTube algorithm. Now that we have the hooks for dispatch, selector, params, history, use styles, let's declare all of those hooks at the top. First, we're going to get the data about the post from use selector. That's going to be const post posts and is loading. And that's going to be coming from use selector. In there, we have a callback function with a state. And finally, we want to get the state dot posts reducer. Then we want to say const dispatch is going to be equal to use dispatch. 
we also want to get the history. So we're gonna say const history is going to be equal to use history. We also want to get the classes. So const classes is going to be equal to use styles. And finally, we also want to get that ID. So we're gonna say const, destructure the ID, and that's coming from use params. Remember our URL? We're going to forward slash post forward slash an ID. Great, we prepared everything to start creating the JSX layout of our post details component. Considering that the post details component is incredibly similar to the post component, it's gonna be a card or a paper that's gonna have some typography where we display all of the post details. Because of that, I'm gonna give you the JSX code for some parts of our post details component. I'm going to paste it in here. You're going to find this in the description down below. The only thing that's not in here is the most important one, and that is the logic for the recommended posts. We're going to code that together. But before we do that, we have to create the data for getting a single post. If you remember correctly, so far we've only worked with posts, plural. Now we have to create the logic for fetching only a single post based on the ID. So let's start with that. We first, of course, have to dispatch some actions. We're going to do it inside of the use effect. And that use effect is going to happen whenever the ID of the post changes. Right inside of there, we can dispatch an action. And the action we're going to dispatch is going to be called get post action. Of course, we want to get the post by some specific ID so we can pass that ID in there. As you can see, our get post ID is not yet defined, so let's import it. We can say import get post, and that is going to be coming from dot dot slash dot dot slash actions forward slash posts. Now is the time that we create this action and make an API to the backend that's going to serve us all the details about our specific post. Let's go to our posts and more specifically actions. Right inside of here, we're going to create one more action creator and we can actually do that by copying the get posts. I'm going to paste it at the top and there are a few changes we have to make. First of all, it's not going to be get posts, it's going to be get post. Second thing is that we'll be getting an ID as a parameter. And that ID is the thing who will pass into our API call. Then the actual API call is not going to be done to fetch posts, rather it's going to be to fetch post. And finally, our type is not going to be fetch all, it's simply going to be fetch post. So let's go to our constants. And then right inside of here, we can create a fetch post action constant. Great. Going back, now we can import it, fetch post. And now everything is ready besides the actual API endpoint. So let's go to our API index.js. And then inside of here, we'll have to create the fetch post. That's going to be export const fetch post. As we discussed, we're getting the ID as a parameter. And then we have to call the api.get and we have to navigate to forward slash posts and then forward slash ID. Now everything is ready and we have to go back to our backend side and bring us the data. So let's go to our server, more specifically routes and then posts. Inside of here, we have to create a route for getting a single post. We can do that right in here, router.get and the route is going to be to forward slash colon ID. This means that it's going to be a dynamic ID. And what controller do we want to call? Well, we want to call the get post controller. Of course, we need to import it at the top, get post. And finally, we have to create it under posts controllers. If we scroll down, you'll notice that we already have a good get post controller. We created this in one of the previous parts and we never actually used it, but now is a good time to do so. Let's see if everything seems right. We're doing the const ID from rec params and we're trying to find that post by ID. And finally, we have res.status200 and we're sending that post back. That seems all right to me. With that said, let's go back to our front end side, to our actions. 
Now we know that we are getting that post back right here as the data and we are sending it as the payload to our reducers. So, so let's go to our reducers, post, we have to import that action type, which is going to be fetch post. Our fetch post is going to be similar to fetch by search, so we can copy it. The only thing we have to change, of course, is the case. It's going to be fetch post. And then in here, instead of setting the post to be action.payload, in this case, we're getting a single post. So we're going to set it right in here. Post is equal to action.payload. I know that we've written a lot of code without actually seeing what's happening, but we've been dealing with data mostly. Now we're going back to our post details and see now we have this post right in here. If it says right there that we don't have get posts, make sure to close the file and then reopen it and it's going to be all good. Looks like our posts are not currently rendering. Let's open up the console and it says that we have failed to get a connection. There is a network error. So let's go back to our code and open up the console. As you can see here, it says identifier get post has already been declared and the error is in routes post.js line three. And indeed you might've noticed it, but we're already importing the get post here and here. So we don't have to do it twice. I'm going to save that. And now we're going to go back to post details component. Let's go back to the browser and see if it works. Okay. Our posts are loading right now and take a look at that. If you hover over them, you can click them. So let's try by clicking one memory and see what happens. Okay. There is an error. It says cannot read property title of undefined. This usually means that we were trying to render something before the data was actually fetched. So if we go back into our post details, we just have to add some checks. Well, first of all, we're going to say if there is no post, then return null. And then second of all, we're going to add the loading state. So if it is loading, in that case, we want to return a paper component. That paper is going to have the elevation equal to six. And it's also going to have a class name equal to classes dot loading paper. And finally, inside of that, we want to have the circular progress component it is going to be quite a big one. So I'm going to set the size to be equal to seven EM. We're going to save that. And now these two checks are making sure that we don't try to render this JSX where we depend on the post if we don't have the post already. If we now save this and go back to the browser, you can see that our post opens up. It has a nice title. We're listing the tags right there, description, who created the post and when the post was created. I also added some paragraphs here to let you know that real time chat and comments could be coming soon. Let me know which one you'd like to see first. I would really like to create the fifth part of the series if there is a lot of demand for it from you guys. With that said, let's check out our loading states. If I now go back, you can see there's loading right there. And if I click on one of these specific memories, you can see this nice loading at the center but we can see it for less than half a second. That's because I have a really quick internet connection. But what would happen if somebody is running this with a slow internet connection? Well, we can actually check that out. And that's one more trick I want to show you. You can open up your developer tools, go to the network tab, and then there you'll see the no throttling thing. You want to switch that to fast 3G. Now this is going to emulate a slower internet connection. So let's go to memories, and see how nice it is to have a visual representation that something is loading. There we go. Our posts are there and let's try to load a specific memory. This loading looked really good. Now let's bring this back to no throttling and let's close it. And let's for a moment admire this nice memory details component and the prog hassle. Once we're done with that, we can focus on the most important part of our memory details component and that is the recommended posts section. Let's code that out together right now. Let's code out the recommended posts part. I'm going to close all the tabs besides the post details, which we're going to have open right here. And I'm going to collapse it and close the file explorer just so we have more space to work with. 
The interesting thing about the recommended posts is that we're gonna use the same endpoint we created before, get posts by search. So I'm going to create one more use effect here. And yes, you can have multiple use effects per functional component. Inside of there, we're gonna have a dependency array that's going to have the post. So whenever the ID changes, the post changes, and then we want to do something. For each post, we want to see if the post exists. And if it does, we want to dispatch a new action creator. That action creator is not going to be get post anymore. It is going to be get posts by search, the one we created before. So we can say right here, dispatch get posts by search. And finally, we have to provide that search query in there. So we can say something like search is going to be equal to none because we're not looking for search. We're looking only for tags. That's what we're gonna use to recommend the posts. So we can say tags is equal to post question mark dot tags dot join. And we want to join it by a comma. Now, if we save that, this is going to populate the posts at the top. Finally, we can use those posts to create a list of recommended posts. Const recommended posts is going to be equal to posts.filter. Inside of there, we want to get our specific post, but more specifically, we want to destructure the underscore ID from there. And then we want to keep all the posts, but delete the one where the underscore ID is equal to, to the current post underscore ID. Of course, the current post cannot be in its own recommended posts. That's why we are doing this. So in here, we can say if we have recommended posts, so if recommended posts dot length, if that is the case, then we want to display something that something we want to display is going to be a div with a class name equal to classes.section. Inside of that div, we're going to have a typography. And that typography is going to have a gutter bottom to give it some margin at the bottom. It's going to have the variant of h5. And then inside of there, we can say you might also like. Finally, below that, we're gonna have a divider. And below that divider, we're gonna have a div. And that div is going to have a class name equal to classes.recommended posts. Inside of that div, we want to open a dynamic block and we want to map over the recommended posts by doing recommended posts.map. Inside of that div, we want to open a dynamic block and say recommended posts.map. So we want to get a post in there and we can immediately destructure all of the things we need from the post, like title. We also need a message. We need a name, the number of likes and the selected file, as well as the underscore ID. Now with all of those things, we want to return something. So we just use a pair of parentheses. And the thing we want to return is going to be another div. Now let's see how this is going to look like if we just try to render out the title. I'm going to save it. And let's go to a specific memory details. And if we scroll down, we can see you might also like this. Let's see if we have something different. In here, it only gives us the post that we are currently on, which is not a good thing. We need to get all the other posts. So I might have made a logical mistake. In here, we need to have a not equal to because we want to filter out only the one that is equal to and we want to keep all the other ones. So now if we go back, as you can see, now we get all the posts that have something to do with Europe. That's good, but let's make them into a nicely styled card. This div is going to have a style property. Inside of there, we're gonna have an object with a margin of 20 pixels. And we're also going to give it a cursor, which is equal to pointer. That means that it's going to show a pointer once we hover over it. Finally, we need to have an on click function. What's going to happen once we click it and on click, we simply want to open up the post. So I'm going to put a callback function right here. And we want to call the open post function 
and pass it the underscore ID of the current post. Finally, we also need to specify a key and the key is going to be underscore ID. Of course, we don't yet have this open post function, but we're going to create it right now. So let's go to the top and let's create it. Const open post is going to be equal to, we're getting in the ID and what do we want to do with that specific ID? Well, we simply want to push to it. So we can use the history dot push and we want to push to forward slash posts forward slash and then to that specific dynamic ID. I see the ID is being used currently, so I'm going to use the underscore ID here as well. Now, if we save that, let's see if that's going to work. We're currently on Dubrovnik. We can see that we added some margin and let's go to, for example, the Colosseum. That's great. It gives you the feeling that you can browse through the page and see all the different things that are available. Great. Now let's style those cards a bit more and show some more details with each one of them. Instead of displaying simply the title, we're going to display a typography component. That typography is going to have gutter bottom. It's also going to have variant equal to H6. And in there, we're simply going to render our title. Now I'm going to copy this one four more times or rather three more times. The first one is going to be H6 because it's the title. And the second one is going to be of a variant subtitle two, and it's going to render our name. Then we're going to have the message below and message is also going to be subtitle two. And finally, we're going to have the last one, which is the likes, and that's going to be subtitle one. And we can just add in front of it, likes is equal to, and then we can say likes dot length. And let's not forget about the most important part, and that is the image. So we can add a self closing image tag right here. The image is going to have the source equal to selected file. And it's also going to have the width equal to 200 pixels. If I now save this, let's take a look in the browser. That looks so much better. As you can see, we can see all of the posts recommended right there that have something to do with Europe. But let's go back and let's see if we go to Niagara Falls, if we can see some different recommended posts. Now we have the Statue of Liberty and Grand Canyon. Let's check out the Statue of Liberty. Looks great. We can see all the info, the image on the right, and we have the idea that we can actually navigate through the page. With recommended posts being done, our whole memory details page is done as well. With all of the changes that they've made, there are also some things that are not working right now because of the way how we structure the data in our Redux. For example, before, as you know, the posts were simply an array of posts. But right now we're getting an object where then we have the array of posts. So there are a few places where we have to fix that. One of those places is going to be the form, form.js component, and then just at the top, see here, state.posts.find. In this case, it's going to be state.posts and one more time, dot posts, so we can find a specific post. Now let's go back to our app and let's see if all the functionality still works. Let's search for something like, let's do Sydney. That works. Let's search for something like, let's do USA. That works as well. Let's see if the pagination works. It works perfectly. That is always great. And let's try to sign in to see what else can we do. I've just signed in. Let's see if we can like the posts. We can, so that's good. There we go. We liked a few posts. The liking functionality still works. Let's try creating a new memory. Let's go with test, 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 and I'm going to add a file. The file is there. And if we click submit, it's just going to stand there. We have to use history.push to navigate it to that newly created memory detail. We can do that by going to form, finding where we are actually creating that post. And then just after that dispatch, we want to use history.push. 
um, it's gonna be pushed like this and looks like we are not importing it. So just at the top, we have to import use history from react router dom. And you know the drill, we have to say cons history is equal to use history. And finally, history.push forward slash posts. Where are we going to get the ID? Well, we cannot get it in here. We have to get it just after we created this specific post. So what we can do is remove this and not call the history.push here. Rather, pass one more parameter to the create post action reducer we're passing the history object, we can go into our action creator, accept that history object. And then after the post is created, what we can do is we can say history dot push. And then in here, we can use data dot underscore ID. That's going to re navigate it for us. Let's save everything. And let's create one more post test, test, test. And I've added the image, I'm going to click submit. And there we go, we are immediately renavigated to a newly created post. And if we go back, you can see it right in here. At this point, everything seems to be working great. And the last thing that we have to do to make this a complete project is to deploy it on the internet so that you can share it with your potential employers and friends. So let's do that right away. To deploy the backend side of our application, we're going to use Heroku. When you log in, you should see something similar to this. At the top right, you can see a new button where you can create a new app. We can choose the app name. I'm going to use something really random like Mern, Memories, JS Mastery. That should be available. And you can choose your region. And then in here, you'll get all the instructions of how you can deploy your application using the Heroku CLI. The first thing you have to do is download and install the Heroku CLI for your own operating system. After you do that, you can follow my steps. Before we start writing the commands, we just have to make sure to change just a few things in the code. First of all, go to the package.json of the server side, and then in there, change this from nodemon to simply node. When you run a server, you don't have to constantly restart it, so we're only gonna need node. And then the second thing is if you don't already have it, make sure to rename this to dot proc file. We need to have the dot proc file where you say web is equal to npm run start. Great. And the last thing, just so we know if our server is running, we can go to our index.js and then in there we can create the app.get route, app.get. It's going to be just slash. And then in there we can get the rec and the res and we can do something like res.send app is running. This is just a message that we're going to get in the browser so that we know that our server is running. Okay, with those changes ready, I'm going to close these files and let's follow the process. Run the Heroku login, press any key. That's going to prompt you to log in. After you're logged in, make sure to run Heroku git clone and make sure that you are in the server directory. So you need to be in the server directory. The process for you might be just a bit different, but just follow the steps. You need to be in the server folder, run the Heroku remote add. And finally, we need to push all of our changes by running git add. We can also do a git commit. And finally, git push Heroku master. This is going to deploy all the changes so that your server is going to be live and deployed on the internet. Okay, we got a confirmation message, verifying, done. We can, we can clear the terminal and expand our browser a bit. Now, if I unzoom this a bit, on the top right side, you should see open app. Once you click that, at the top left, you should see app is running. That means that we are ready to take this URL and connect our front end to it. So copy that URL. Let's go back to our code, this time to the client side. We're going to go to the client, source, API, index.js. And then in here, you're gonna replace this base URL with your own new deployed server URL. That is one thing that we have to do. And the second thing is that you have to go to the public folder 
and then in here you have to add one special file. For deployment, we'll be using something known as Netlify. And for Netlify to work with React router applications, we have to add the underscore redirects file. So just underscore redirects. Then you can put forward slash and then the asterisk. Finally, forward slash index.html and finally 200. This is the only thing you have to have in this file. Once you do that, you can close everything and we're now going to CD back into the root and then finally CD into the client side. When you're in the client side, we want to build out our entire React application by running npm run build. While that is building, we can expand this and check out Netlify. We're gonna use Netlify to deploy the front-end part of our application. Make sure to log in and then there, click Sites. If you scroll down, you should see a place where you can drag and drop your folder. So if we go back, you can see that the build is successfully finished and in the client folder, you should see a new folder called Build. You can right-click it and click Reveal in File Explorer. And finally, the only thing you have to do is to drag and drop the Build folder, not the entire client folder where our code is, just the Build folder. Once you do that, our app is going to be deployed in a matter of seconds. There we go, it's deployed. Before we check it out, let's change the domain settings by going to site settings, change site name, and then in here, you can give it your own name. Let's do Mern Memories JS Mastery Test, just like that. Feel free to personalize this. I'm gonna click save, and let's go to that URL to check it out. Our memories are loading and we can see the posts, which means that our frontend is not only hosted online, but also connected to our backend, which is also hosted online. This works perfectly. We can paginate, we can see all of the great features that we just created in this video. It's so good seeing the application you've been working on for quite some time now being almost done. Of course, there are always some new features that you can keep adding to your applications and keep improving them. That was it for this video. If it was helpful, definitely feel free to leave a like and comment. And if you'd like to build more projects with me, make sure to subscribe and turn on the bell notifications. If you turn on the bell notifications, you can be sure that you're not going to miss the fifth part of the Mern series when I upload it. If your app is not behaving as it should, just feel free to go to this GitHub repo, it's going to be linked in the description, go to the part 4 and then download it. It should be working. If it is working and if you like the project, definitely make sure to leave a star. With that said, thank you so much for watching, see you in the next one and have a wonderful day.